right, so one of the ways that a government or any central controlling authority can intervene in a market is via the prices, okay? And let's start by talking about a price ceiling, all right? Let's suppose that we've got a, a sort of standard perfect competition model with supply and demand as given here. And in equilibrium, these guys we know are gonna choose this, or this market is gonna arrive at this price P star and the equilibrium quantity Q star. The government could intervene and basically introduce policies that affect this price. And one such policy is a price ceiling, okay? It basically says the price uh, cannot rise above whatever price you choose as your ceiling, which we'll call P with a bar over it, the price ceiling, okay? There are two kinds of price ceilings or two sort of relevant cases. If the price ceiling is greater than the uh, equilibrium price, then this is called a non-binding price ceiling. It doesn't matter, okay? In this case, if the price is, you know, it, the rule is basically your price can't be above P bar, uh, the price ceiling. It's not, so you're not violating it, but you didn't do anything different. And so everything is the same as in perfect competition. And we call that basically non-binding. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect your decisions. However, if you choose a price ceiling that's below the equilibrium price, then you've got a binding price ceiling. And in that case, you're going to run into a uh, shortage, okay? Why is that the case? Well, because now that the price is down here, the quantity that the supply curve gives and the quantity that the demand curve gives don't match, okay? The supply is gonna be given by this and the demand by this. So you can see that the quantity demanded exceeds the quantity supplied, okay? Now, let's think about how this plays out with welfare, okay? It'd be very tempting for a lot of governments to impose lower price ceilings on the idea that everybody likes lower prices and that's gonna make everybody better off, okay? And indeed, if we did find a way to push the supply curve down so that the, it, the price naturally fell down to this level, for example, if we pushed it out here, that would indeed increase everybody's welfare. But if you don't do that hard work of lowering costs, a price ceiling in a perfectly competitive market is gonna lower total welfare. That doesn't mean it's worse for everybody though. Let's sort of see who the, benef uh, the winners and losers are. So to begin with, if we have uh, no price ceiling, the consumer surplus, remember if there's no price ceiling, our price is here and our consumer surplus is this region here, okay? We're gonna use green for producer surplus. And the producer surplus is the value underneath the price they pay and above their marginal cost. All right, if we then impose this price ceiling, in this case, it's gonna be worse for the firms and better for some of the consumers, but worse for others and overall a net negative. Why is that the case? Well, let's see, the quantity is now gonna be given by the quantity supplied, right? It may be the case that like uh, these other, the quantity demanded is, uh, is out there, but it doesn't actually matter, okay? I'm gonna actually erase this stuff too because Oops, I knew that would happen. It's just gonna clutter the picture. Okay. So here's our situation we're in. What's the new producer surplus? Well, the price that these guys are paying is all the way down here. So in theory, it could be as high as this because these guys value the good up here and now they're paying a much lower price for it. And so their consumer surplus is perhaps a lot higher, okay? The firms, on the other hand, have much lower producer surplus. They're down here, okay? And we also have 
now deadweight loss because this region consists of people, transactions that we would like to happen, but they're not happening, okay? Because uh, the price ceiling prevents them from happening. Like basically these people want to pay a price higher than they're allowed to. And the firms would have been willing to take that price if they could get it. But the government or somebody else has intervened and said, you're not allowed to charge that price. Now, who benefits and who loses? Well, we can see here that the consumers, some of the consumers benefit. The ones who are able to purchase the good get it at a lot lower price, so they're really happy. But some are worse off, and the firms are worse. They get a lower price than they would normally get. Okay, so all of this is uh, the best case scenario for perfect competition. Total welfare falls, but at least some people, uh, you know, some people are better off. But this is the best case. I'm sorry, total welfare, I should have written falls. Because it assumes that the people who most value this good are the ones who are able to get it. And that's not necessarily the case. If you don't have a market where price equals, uh, you know, marginal cost and that's equal to willingness to pay, how is, you know, we have demand exceeding supply and how are we going to determine who gets what? It could be that the people who most want the good are somehow able to get it, but it could also be that it just becomes luck. It just becomes down to uh, who you know, like if you have some kind of connection or corruption, it could be that there's a black market and uh, some people get it because they have a connection and they sell it to others and so on. Okay. The upshot is that this is the consumer surplus if the people who most value the good get it. But it could also be that some of the people, anybody in this area over here is able to get the good. You know, like it could be like in the worst case scenario, we would just have like maybe this group of people with the lowest willingness to pay. They might be able to get the product and their consumer surplus would be that. And all that blue stuff would sort of disappear. We don't normally draw that because it's really messy. Uh, but just emphasizing that this diagram here is the best case scenario for how much welfare falls. It would normally fall worse than this uh, if we can't make sure that the people who most want the good, most willing to pay for it, are able to get it. Now, to make things more complicated, a price ceiling is not always bad, okay? A price ceiling can actually be good if there are other reasons that the market is not working well, in particular, if there's market power or if there are externalities. So let's look at that situation next. <laughs> 